Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my first look mini-series on Abaddon 3, The Warborn. It is by Spiderweb Software, and it releases today, September 14th, 2016. You can grab it for 10% off if you grab it before September 21st, 2016. So as you can guess, Abaddon 3 is the third installment in the Abaddon series, which is an RPG series. If you have never seen these games before, you're in for a treat. They are fantastic. They are phenomenal. And the Abaddon series in general is just good. It's really good. And Spiderweb Software in general is good. Abaddon's only a small part of an RPG dynasty that Spiderweb Software has put out over the years. I'm a really big fan of their work, and I am super happy and really excited to actually be showcasing it and covering it here on my channel. It is an amazing, amazing series of games from Gene Forge to Avernum to the remake of the Avernum games. They have two of them out right now, and I'm sure more are coming to the Abaddon series. They're all really, really, really awesome, awesome, strong entries into the CRPG realm. Speaking of CRPG, eh, 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 hint, 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 nudge, nudge, nudge. Uh, Colonel RPG, as you guys know, is a good friend of mine. We do a lot of uh, collaborative stuff. He is actually doing coverage of this, a full LP of Abaddon 3. So if you like what you see in this first look mini series, definitely go check out what he is doing on his channel for Abaddon 3. You can check it out right here. Here's the playlist. Bling! I don't know if there's going to be a sound effect. I doubt it, but I made one. Anyhow, go check it out. It's going to be quite good. And if you guys like CRPG goodness, go check out his channel over here. That being said, we're going to hop in and get started. Start new game. All right, we have six character classes that we can choose from. We can choose from the Blade Master, the Shadow Walker, the Shaman, the Sorcerer, and the Tinker Mage. Also, we can choose between male and female of each and every one of the classes. We're going to be a man because, I have to admit, the, that does look like the better of the two. Maybe it's because I've seen this so many times, it just it, it just fits, it's just normal for me to see that. But the female definitely is a sharper look in my opinion. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not sure who I want to play as. We can read through here real quick, and we will. There's going to be a lot of reading, guys and gals. The story is fantastic, the writing is really, really good. That is what sets us apart from a lot of the other RPGs out there. So bear in mind that the first episode might almost be completely reading, but I'm going to be doing a few episodes so you guys get a, an idea. And like I said, go check out the Colonel's Let's Play of this. It's going to be quite good. And I've already seen a little bit of it, but I couldn't spoil it. After I get the first couple of episodes of this out, once I get my first look done, I can actually go and watch it in its entirety. So there is that. All right, so welcome to Abaddon. First, select one of the five character types to the left. Use the text box to change your name. When you're ready, press the OK button. All right, we'll take a look at the Blade Master first. A Blade Master is a true warrior. He is most comfortable in a. Hold on, I gotta see. Does it change? She. It does! That's so good! Sorry. That's something that people overlook all the time in games when they have male and female classes. They don't change the he to she. And it, it's it's one of those small things that I. It, it bothers me a little bit, but it's not like game breaking. Anyhow, Blade Master is a true warrior. He is most comfortable in a massive suit of plate armor, wielding a sword and shield, or a huge halberd, striding boldly into a crowd of foes and sending them flying with mighty blows. Blade Masters are not subtle. Blade Masters are natural leaders. Their war cries can strengthen their allies and weaken their foes. They can also challenge enemies, keeping them away from fragile group, or sorry, fragile members of your group. I would say group members. All right, I apologize for that, folks. Unfortunately, there's always disruptions around the house. It's just a thing that you're going to have to accept and move on from. The Shadow Walker. The Shadow Walkers are warriors of shadows. They count on cunning and evasion, slipping through the guards of their enemies and delivering lethal blows. They can attack with blades, thrown razor discs, and pots of noxious and deadly alchemical substances. And then they vanish into thin air. Shadow Walkers have many tricks to evade, stun, poison, and heavily damage foes. Also, Shadow Walkers can pick locks and disarm traps. Cool stuff, cool stuff. We'll go down to the Shaman. The Shaman has dedicated his life to nature, and nature, in return, has rewarded him with great power. He can use his connection to the wilds to heal and bless his allies. And then, when angered, he can call wind, lightning, and fire to devastate those who challenge him. The Shaman is rarely alone. He can call wolves or eventually drakes to serve and protect him. Also, he has a unique ability to heal wounded allies. Cool. Then we have the Sorcerer. The Sorcerer has dedicated his life to the mastery of the arcane arts. Fragile in battle, he makes up for it with the ability to summon forth clouds of fire, lightning, or ice, obliterating his foes. 
But that's not all. A sorcerer can cloud the minds of his foes, even potentially causing them to fight for him. He can bless his allies and curse his enemies. He can even use spells to pick locks and disarm traps. And finally we have the Tinker Mage. A Tinker Mage is a mechanical master able to use his skills to make powerful weapons and to construct turrets to destroy foes. A Tinker Mage can shoot lethal razor discs from his wrist flinger, okay, and disarm traps and pick locks with great ease. The Tinker Mage can make a deadly turret and then use his projectiles to pull foes into range, freezing them in place, applied engineering at its finest. I think we're going to go with the Tinker Mage, it sounds interesting. We're just going to leave it as Harmon, or Harmon, no, you know what, we'll call him Hammy. He's going to be called Hammy, I like it, it's going to be what we roll with. Anyway, a quick, a very, very quick rundown of Abaddon 1 and 2. You don't need to play either one of those if you want to just jump in and play this. Uh, they're all kind of self-sufficient, but after you play the others, you'll understand a bit more about what's going on and throwbacks to the older games, just so you know. So I still recommend playing through the entire series. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Anyhow, uh, Abaddon 1 and the whole story behind Abaddon, there's five kingdoms that have kind of banded together to face off against all the other enemies that are fighting them and they've conglomerated as kind of like a giant kingdom or group called the Pact. Avedon is kind of at the center of that. They are like the elitist, the strongest of the strong, led by Redbeard and there's hands and I think eyes and other body parts that they call them. So spies and warriors. Warriors are hands. They are above the law. Their word is the law and they go around and they deal with uh, the problems that arise to the Pact. So, there is a conspiracy kind of gathering all the enemies of the Pact together, and that's what Abaddon 1 was all about. You had to go and unravel this conspiracy, defeat it, and, and basically save the Pact. In Abaddon 2, there was a surprise or sneak attack on Abaddon. It shattered the fortress. Abaddon is known as the Black Fortress. It got shattered, and, well, there's a lot of fallout. So you can choose to either try to fix things and recover, you know, Recover the, the strength and power of Avedon, rebuild it, and side with, you know, what you always were as a hand of Avedon. Um, or you can side with the other guys and try to destroy it for good and so on and so forth. And it was Avedon the Corruption, I believe, is what the second game was called. And now here we are at Avedon 3 of the Warborn, and we're going to go see what this is all about. Let's begin for real. Sorry for the long intro, guys. I do apologize. But let's begin. All right, I said begin, but I lied to you guys. We're not going to begin. All right, we have casual, normal, hard, and torment. Casual for people who are new to fantasy role-playing games or just want to easily experience the storyline. Your foes are far less threatening. And it might not be terrible to play through on casual if you guys are struggling at all. The game's fun. I think normal is totally fine. Even hard, I've heard, isn't that difficult. It's when you get into torment that things go crazy. The game starts out quite easy, but becomes a challenge as you get close to the end, the default difficulty level, which is what we'll be playing on. A harder difficulty setting for the more experienced gamer, your foes will do more damage and be a lot harder to kill. Also, friendly fire is enabled. Ooh. Most of your area of effect spells will affect your allies. This is the level that uh, the Colonel is playing on, so you guys know. If you want to see what that's all about, go check that out. And Torment, the ultimate challenge. You will need to use every trick and fully utilize every ability to defeat your vicious foes. Your characters will regain their strength in battle more slowly. Also, friendly fire is enabled. Most of your, yeah, area of effect spells will affect your allies. All right, we're going to go with normal. You are a Hand of Avedon, a mighty warrior trusted to defend the Pact. The Pact is an alliance of five nations banded together for safety. The Far Lands, enemies of the Pact, surrounds... Surrounded on all sides, these are nations of barbarians, raiders, titans, faded, jealous empires, all waiting for a sign of weakness. The pact had one purpose, survival. By crushing the farlands and keeping them weak and divided, the alliance functioned for centuries. This is kind of the story of what happened in Avedon 1, just so you guys know. Then the Age of Chaos began. The farlands banded together and attacked in unison, pouring over the border and inflicting enormous devastation. For three years, you have fought to hold back the hordes, the horde, the hordes. Armies have fallen, cities have burned. Once the pact be, uh, being this weak would be unthinkable. The pact had a protector, determined to root out those who would weaken it. Avedon, the Black Fortress. Warriors of Avedon, such as you, watched over the five nations of the pact. When anyone acted to harm the peace and tranquility of the pact, Avedon destroyed them. Its power was without limit. Its word was law. 
Abaddon watched over the pact for three centuries. Its warriors wield the finest weapons, its wizards are allowed to learn the most powerful spells, and the keeper of the Black Fortress, Redbeard, directed them all. Then Abaddon was nearly destroyed in a surprise attack. Its warriors were hunted down, Redbeard was driven out. Without Abaddon's guidance and protection, the pact struggled to stay strong and unified. And that kind of explains what happened in Abaddon too. You are one of the few fighting to help Abaddon survive. You are a hand of Abaddon, a warrior and enforcer. Your authority is, with, is almost without limit. Your word is law. You are in one of the most violent lands. You are on the border with uh, Camaria, one of the far lands, full of stone fortresses and brutal warriors. You hunt the hostile Camarians as best you can without reinforcements, supplies, or guidance from Abaddon. You have just waken, sorry, woken up in your quarters. You have, sorry, uh, it's hard to read this text, guys. I do okay sometimes, but sometimes I just butcher it, so I apologize. You are stationed in Camp Nightshade, one of Abaddon's few remaining small fortresses on the border with the enemy Farlands. You are bruised and exhausted from constant patrols and skirmishes, but rest is unlikely. It is time to rise and receive your orders for the day. Risking all to hold back the unending waves of invaders. Alright, and that is the story so far. It touched on a lot what I said through uh, Avedon 1, Avedon 2, and kind of explained the story so far. This is why you're able to just hop in and kind of have an understanding of what you're doing and where you're at. And you can play this without any you know prior knowledge needed from Avedon 1 and 2. Anyway, folks, let's begin. I, I hope all the sound and everything is okay. There's very limited options. But there's enough that you can play around and get stuff the way you want to. All right, so this is going to be a bit different than you're used to for a control scheme. You can move your map around with the arrow keys or drag to the edges of the screen, which is good. I like that as a feature. Um, however, you cannot move around with W, A, S, and D, which is a bit weird, and it does not look like you can change the movement of the camera to those keys. But you can change a lot of the other stuff. Anyhow, you move around by clicking your mouse, you roll out of bed, ready for another day of war. As a hand, you have a lot of freedom. You can scout, you can grab some soldiers and raid a Camarian settlement, you can even check in with your commander and see if she has any guidance for you. You haven't received orders, let alone supplies or reinforcements, from Abaddon in months. Your job is to do all you can with what little you have. Alright, so we can move around, and as you see, we're going to continue to get some text, which is fine. Like I said, the story is one of the strongest selling points of the game because it's really well written and it's fantastic and, well, you'll see. As you wake up and your vision unblurs, you see someone left something for you in the night. It's a rare, pleasant surprise. Someone finally brought you your new cloak that you've been trying to get. It is waiting for you on the table to the north. Alright, so as you see, we can walk around, we can move all over the place. Now, if you press G at any point, it's your quote-unquote grab button. This window is where you can pick up and or drop items and equipment or remove them or use them. Uh, select an item or type the letter by it on the ground to move it to your pack. Select it again to pick it up. Alright, so as you see here, we have a cloak. I'm going to press A and it's going to move into our pack. I'm going to select it again and I'm just going to drag it onto him and it gets auto put on there. It's an awkward fit, but the cloak will prepare you for a harsh Camarian winter. Time to go out and look for something to do. Yes, nobody is watching you now, but one day you may have to answer to Avedon for your actions, or lack of them. To open the door, search a box, or use any other object, select it. So this game harkens back to the old school RPGs where you actually had to run around and select things and look inside of them at like point blank range. Like right now, unfortunately, the barrels are empty, there's nothing to be grabbed there. But there will be stuff scattered all over the ground, just laying around in many, many places. And if that's the case, you can just press G, and if you're within a certain proximity, you'll see all the stuff that's there. Otherwise, you'll have to go up and do stuff like opening that door, for instance. Alright, so over here, there doesn't seem to be anything that we can actually loot, but if we come over here and we press G, there's nothing over there. If we get closer to this stuff, we press G, there's still nothing there. Okay, I thought there might be some stuff. And it looks like this gate is locked. We cannot get through it, but there looks like there's an unlocking mechanism over there. We'll head on over here. Alright, in pack, press these buttons to use items. Okay, you see these little, like, star-looking things? Cool. 
Surprisingly, more supplies have been left for you. A flask sits on a nearby table. The shape of the flask identifies it as one of Hand Asazi's healing brews. Two pieces of new equipment in one day? Unheard of. This is a store or there is a storeroom to the east. It's been mostly empty for months. Who knows? Maybe something handy has appeared there overnight. Get the potion. Once it's in your pack, you can press the star button next to it to use it. You can use scrolls and lamps in the same way. Missile weapons for you to equip are in the next room. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to just press G. And you see it's on the ground. We're going to pick that up. And what I'm going to do is actually direct, uh, just click on it and then put it down here as a quick use item. In case we need to use it for anything. I'm going to press G again. Nothing is showing up. There's nothing in that pot. So we're going to come over here. We're going to open the door. And it actually puts us outside. As you emerge into the chilly morning, you see Torch hobble towards you. You don't know his real name. Since you ever, or since you arrived in Camp Nightshade, everyone's only ever called him Torch. He's not a Hand of Abaddon, just a packed soldier assigned to defend this Abaddon outpost. He's been here for a long time, and he has the scars to show it. He's too old and damaged to be sent out on most patrols. He's usually here at home, helping out. He waves to you as you approach. Hail, Hammy! Just coming out with the news of the day. Actual surprise today. A surprise? Actual news from Abaddon? Torch laughs. <laughs> no, not that much of a surprise. Still nothing from our masters. It's just that Commander Cersei, or Cerise? Cerise, wishes to give you your guidance in person today. Uh, any idea what that's about? No, and I know better to ask. Never good news to be called by the commander, though. Well, I should be going then. Torch turns slowly, wincing when his weight lands on his right leg. Ah, old wounds are hurting. You move on ahead. I'll hobble behind you. I'm sure you want to hurry and get your guidance. You now have a quest to find the commander and get your first mission. Your destination will be marked on the map. By the way, why do they call you Torch? He seems saddened by the question. Camarian village attacked pack travelers a decade back. It was part of the punishment team. Okay, Went into the village pretty poor there. Their buildings were mostly wood. I had to get their attention. Got my nickname because of that. He shakes his head. Hope you have a better day than that. Have to go. He hobbles off. Alright, well, we're going to go back in because there was another room that we didn't actually loot. Let's go in here. And let's move the, ma move the screen. I do wish I could remap re all the keys because that would make this just a little bit better for me, but it's okay. Alright, so there's an armor stand on two different occasions and a bunch of stuff on the table, so we're going to press G. And it looks like the armor stand has nothing on it. So we have iron razor discs. Uh, basic attack, it's a razor flinger. It looks like that's actually going to be what we're going to use. The short bow, can't equip it, only shadow walkers, oh wait, shadow walkers can't use, shamans can't use, and tinker mages can't use. Um, shaman can't use, or shaman's required to use the javelins. Okay, so we're going to use the iron razor discs as our weapon. Which is cool, and I believe down here we can switch to using our ranged weapons at any point. And again, we have no uh, nothing else that we can do right now. Alright, so we're going to head on out. I'm going to take a look at the time real quick. Oh, good, we have plenty of time to still get some stuff done. So like I said, it's going to be a lot of story that we're going to be experiencing in this first little bit. I'm going to come down, we're going to talk to him again. Now you chat with Torch a little, he fills you in on the gossip in the fort, you tell him what's going on outside. Soldiers in Camp Nightshade need to kill a lot of time. Okay. Alright, so you see there's some stuff laying on the ground here. So we press G and you'll look. We can pick up a shovel and a trowel. I don't know that we need either of these things, but I'm going to grab it anyway because that's how I roll. I like to grab most things that we find laying around on the ground. And you'll see me randomly opening my inventory. It's actually intentional. So there's that. Alright, we're going to head in here and I don't know what's in here. We can take a look at the map. Oh. Did I actually boot? Oh. I can reposition the map? When did that happen? That's new. Didn't know I could do that before. That's cool. Uh, I don't know what the map button is. There's one for a larger map. Is it tab? It's tab. Okay, so tab will bring up the larger map. It's been a while since I played these games, guys and gals. You have to forgive me. Alright, so we're going to go and press G, and there's a couple of bags of coal that might be useful. We'll pick it up. There's nothing over there. Oh, there is. Okay, so there's some more bags of coal. We'll pick those up as well. 
We'll come over here and nothing on the ground, but if you take a look, there is the very first box we could open that we can interact with. And like I said, guys and gals, this is uh, hearkening back to the old school RPGs where you actually had to pay attention to the scenery. It didn't just go, hey, I'm a barrel, you can loot, when big, giant, bold letters. I mean, I like, I like that at times because it makes things a little bit easier and quicker. But at the same time, you lose some of the appreciation for the handcrafted uh, scenery and like just areas. So I like this too. I've, I've got an appreciation for this. Looks like a whole bunch of random stuff. I don't know that any of that's going to be useful. So we're going to leave it for now. Worst case, we can always come back for it. There's some boogers on the ground. And it looks like there's another bag of coal somewhere here that we were able to pick up. And it doesn't seem like there's anything else we can do. Alright, so we're going to head on this way. I'm going to scroll. Can I use my map to scroll? Oh, I can. Cool. Alright, we're going to go over here through this. And let's see what's on the ground. There's just a giant clay pot. It looks like none of these things are accessible except for that basket. What's in the basket? Ooh. Hidden switch. You find a concealed button and press it. You hear some grinding stones. I wonder what that did. It's interesting to say the least. Um, looks like we got a wooden shield. I will definitely grab that and equip it. Uh, let's see, there's something in here. You find a hidden switch, a button, blah, blah, blah. We press it. I don't know what that opened. I'm sure it's something amazing, but I have no idea what. Alright, we're going to come up here, and another thing for us to loot. We're going to go and check the ground. Nothing there. And what do we have here? Animal skin bed rolls. Okay, blankets. I'm going to grab all of that. I'm just going to press A a bunch of times. And as they move up into position, this is A, B, C, so on and so forth. I'm just going to loot it all. How much weight do we have? We're encumbered at 42. We're wearing 24. So I think we're okay for now. Look over here, and it looks like there is some chain mail. We can pick it up, but we need a minimum of 4 strength, and sorcerers cannot use it. We can use... <laughs> what did that say? Sorry. Like pants for your chest. That's awesome. Alright, and there is a sage's rod. We can't use it because Blade Masters, Shadow Walkers, and Tinker Mages can't use it. Well, we'll grab it anyway. Alright, we're in here, and there's nothing else on the ground for us. If we're able to increase our strength, I think we'll be looking pretty solid. Alright, let's scroll down here. Let's see, I don't see anything else over there that we can do. This Is this door locked? I think this door is locked. Open door. The door is locked. You don't have enough lock picks. We need to have one to open it. Unfortunately, we do not have the one, so we cannot do that. And there might be some junk on the ground over here. Oh, that is the combat button. Sorry. Did not mean to do that. All right, we're going to come over here, and we turn the wheel, and we have opened that. I don't know if anything else is opened for us. Because remember, we... Oh, this looks like this opened up over here. Okay, and what's in here? Uh, a lot of nothing. Just some random... Oh, wait. Something over here. A scroll of lightning. That's cool. And a bag of meal times two. What, what, what happened to it? Oh, oh, it's... Sorry. I, I didn't loot it. My bad. Alright, we're going to pick that up and add that to our quick use menu button thingy there. And that's it. We've cleared out all that we can clear here until we get a lockpick. And I guess we're going to head on south. We're going to come over here. That pot is not usable, but we can check the ground. And it looks like there is a fruit on the ground there. There is indeed fruit. It restores, what, 8 HP or 8 to 18. So we'll add that to the quick bar as well. I'm a big fan of utilizing my quick bars in games like this, guys and gals. Just so you know, I'm going to leave the trowel laying around. That is a cow. It says moo. Cows say moo, ladies and gentlemen. We've just learned a very valuable new lesson. Alright, a hatchet, a saw, and a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to grab all of it again. Don't know how much are we... It doesn't look like it's costing us anything to carry this stuff. We have a sickle and a bunch of fruit to boot. And it all went into our hot bar there, which is cool. And we're going to wander around a bit more. You pass the stream and approach the main entrance of Camp Nightshade. As usual, it is quite underpopulated and intense. Your camp has much terrain to control and few resources to do it. It's a pretty serious place. You take your familiar walk to the commander's office to get your guidance. Most of the facilities are burrowed into the walls of this remote ravine. 
The commander is in the Moldy Warren to the southwest. Alright. Well, I'm assuming it's probably over there. Let's take a look at our map. Oh yeah, it does show up. Is there a way to increase the map size? I feel like that's a little bit small. I'll take a look. Maybe it's an option I can do later. But we have a workshop, information center, underground cells. Report to uh, Cerise, uh, Commander's Hall. It's really small. Like, it's super small. I can't make it any bigger. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Alright, is there anything that we can loot over here? Nope. We'll go down here. This guy's like, what was I thinking? It's a nightshade guard. Greetings, Hammy. Greetings. Alright, what I think we're going to do before we head on down there and do stuff, I do see there's a box and stuff down there that we may or may not be able to go through. Looks like the gate is unopenable. Nightshade guard, safe hunting. We're not ready to leave just yet. We're going to go up here and we're going to check out this place. And we'll probably break off the episode after we do so. Alright, into this place, and there is a couple of buckets of water and some towels. That all sounds wonderful to me. And a whole bunch of weird looking people in robes. Hello, Hand. Hello. Is that an Eye of Abaddon? Oh, dude, you're running away from me. What are you doing? Don't run. We send what we learn to Abaddon. Alright, ooh. You drop in to see Eye Adun. Uh, one of the few eyes of Abaddon permanently stationed here. Eyes are spies, sages, and commanders, and they are far less numerous than hands. Ad Adun, or let's see, Audun, Audun, that's what we're going to call him. Audun is also unique. He is a native of uh, Sforgald, a faraway island on savage, or of savage sailors and raiders. He bears the tattoos and scars of a member of uh, that particular far land. Now he is a loyal and jovial servant of the Pact. He walks up and claps, clasps you on the arm. Greetings, Hammy. Busy time? Yes. Feel in air? Yes. Less spying. More fighting. Less me. More for you. You wait for Audun to send you out to gather some fresh intelligence, as he does every single time he sees you. Well, I'd like to know more about uh, Sforgaldi. Sforgaldi is a far land. Enemy? Yes. My enemy now. Sad, but it is. Would tell you one time the tale of my being here. It is long tale of drama. Um, describe the Sforgaldi. People of sea, fierce raiders, we are born and die in water. Jolly fighters, maybe foolish at times, too foolish, yes. Our life was raiding the rich lands of Pact. Now, in this age of chaos, old ways are new again. I'd like to hear your story. Ah, but as I say, story is long, and I must concentrate on scrolls. Much is happening. Cerise tells me Abaddon orders many maps. Must be ready, yes. Don't displease Keeper, yes. Abaddon gave you orders? Yes, message came today. Need sets of maps, troop movements, something happening in uh, Camaria. This I know. Well, I have another question. Uh, I, Adun, uh, shuffles through the scrolls and books on the walls looking for helpful squibs of information. Hmm, hmm, silly poking at scrolls when wolves at door, yes? Abaddon knows. Abaddon will guide. Adun uh, tends to indicate points of interest by pointing his sword at them. This habit makes the other eyes extremely nervous. Uh, what do you do for Camp Nightshade? I am I of Avedon, sent here special a year ago to watch east parts of Camaria. Send you hands out for information. Send to Avedon. Get orders back. Ordinary, ordinary way of things, yes? You've had orders of Avedon recently, but only recently. Before was silence from Avedon for a year. Had to direct own research. Very worrying. Hard to keep happy attitude. Well, do you need information now? Oh, almost always. You know me. Always asking, always busy. Sforgaldi are not lazy people. Sure, there is more you could do, given a spare moment. I have another question. Anything you're trying to learn right now? Hmm, right now, I'm gathering and sorting and copying and uh, collating what I have learned from last year. Things are happening. Must answer commands of Black Fortress. You will not be able to do this until you can leave camp, yes? I'm sure the commander will give you permission soon. There are wolves to the northeast of camp gate. Uh, wander around, look at things, odd behavior, find out what is wrong with them, let us know. Uh, what makes you think they are dangerous? Could mean hostile shamans near. 
commanding them. Chimerian Raiders. A wild, what is that? Wild Rim... Drill... Dry... Dry... The Wild Rim. Sure. Rebels. Yeah, I'm never going to be able to say that consistently, guys. Wild Rim... Ry, it's Wild Rylum. Wild Rylum Rebels. Could be either... Um, this near camp, not a good thing, no? What exactly should I do? The wolves seem distracted, confused, as if controlled from afar. Standard magical signs follow the wolves. Maybe see a thing of value to know. Will I be paid? Of course. Is way of hand to be paid for risk and work? Is way of eye to have much to pay out? I don't wear scarabs, yes? No need. Okay, I think that's all for now. And that is all for this epi... It's not. <laughs> Adun's Intelligence. Ayadun is the spy master of Camp Nightshade. Hands revere him for his ability to pay generous rewards to or for the intelligence you gather. There are numerous wolves lurking around the camp. Adun thinks they are a tool of the enemy's shamans. See if you can follow one of the wolves to the northeast of the camp. Uncover and deal with any spies it leads you to. To see the quest you currently have, open the journal screen. That is actually going to do it for this particular episode, guys and gals. Don't forget, right here... I don't know if it's going to bling. Anyway, right there is the Let's Play for Colonel RPG's full run of Abaddon 3, The Warborn. And, again, to check out his channel, check out the annotation over here. Bling! And, well, if you guys want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll be down below in the description of the video. And if you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will catch you guys on the very next First Look episode in this First Look miniseries of... Have it on three, the Warborn. Until then, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>